Thanks for tuning back in to part two of my visit to the Carillon Historical Park here in Dayton, Ohio. We start this half of the visit to the park with a Bowling Green Rail Depot. The station dates from 1894 and was moved here from Bowling Green, Ohio. An old signal semaphore, two in fact, both showing a stop, do not proceed signal. One for the track you're on and one for the track running in the opposite direction. Let's take a look inside. Little depots like this were typical of small towns and communities along the rail line in the early 19th and 20th centuries. Nice little coal stove in the middle of the room. I wonder how many people walked up to this window and purchased tickets over the years. These depots were a source of news and communication in early towns. A signal box or tower, this one dating from 1907. This is a recreation of an early building and is called the Dayton Cyclery. Couple of early bicycles, sometimes called a penny farthing bicycle, which were a bit dangerous to ride. And the so-called safety bikes that came onto the scene in the late 1800s. This blue one has wooden rims and probably dates from around 1900. R.A. Cycle, made by the Miami Cycle Company in Middletown, Ohio. I know what this is because this was around when I was a child. It's the gear chain on a three-speed bicycle that were commonly called English bikes. These were all the rage before the 10-speeds took over the market and the shifter up on the handlebar. A nice collection of interesting old bicycles. I moved over to the James F. Dickey Family Transportation Museum. Here's an 1870s era stagecoach quietly awaiting restoration. old horse-drawn mail buggy, a Conestoga wagon. Some believe that it is this wagon that is responsible for why Americans drive on the right side of the road. This is apparently the oldest remaining steam locomotive built in America, built in 1835. Looks like a little yard engine to me. An early electric city trolley also called a streetcar, open on the sides. It says this is an interurban car, closed on the sides, so I guess it was used for longer runs. Made by the Kuhlman Car Company. The motor controller. Now is Baltimore and Ohio caboose, which is where the brakeman and conductor typically hung out. Observation perches on each side. A nice place to eat. Complete with a stove. And sink. It just doesn't get any better than that. This car has a Detroit and Mackinac livery on its side. Let's take a look inside. Pretty posh looking. Lots of beautiful woodwork and fancy lighting.
very nice lavatory. This area in the back of the car was relegated to men only. No respectable lady would be found back in this area. The now defunct Miami and Erie Canal once flowed through the park and was once the site of lock number 17 seen in this photo, which looks like this today. Canal boats were raised and lowered in locks like this as they moved up and down the canal system. Some of the hardware still remains in the stonework. The recess in the stone wall received the lock gate when it was swung wide open. Canal Superintendent's Office. This is where the business of the canal took place. Here's a nice model of what the canal looked like back in its day. Columbia Bridge Works, Dayton, Ohio. Definitely a lightweight bridge spanning the canal, made to support not much more than a horse and buggy. A really nice covered bridge. $5 fine for riding or driving faster than a walk. Look at that all timber structure. Very nice. Derbies like these can only mean one thing. The Wright Brothers. This is a recreation of the Wright Cycle Company building that was once over on West 3rd and South William Street in Dayton. Inside, the Wright Cycle business has been recreated, as well as where they worked on their airplane. That's a wind tunnel they made to test various wing shapes. Some different airfoil shapes tested in the wind tunnel. This is an original 1905 Wright Flyer, which was the third iteration of their airplane. I understand that this aircraft was donated by Orville Wright himself to the museum. These guys even built their own engines. Back inside the museum is a large display of old cash registers because Dayton was home to the National Cash Register Company. Bootleggers, bandits, and badges. That sure looks like a gangster car. A Thompson submachine gun, circa 1921. Here's an old time police call box used in the era before two way radio when cops walked a beat. They used the phones inside these boxes to report back to headquarters. Looks like a Dayton paddy wagon. And here's where the boys in blue would bring you when you're bad. The museum even has this vintage merry go round for kids, both young and old, to ride. I see the bells are now playing in the carillon. So I will wrap up this explore of the park and museum and let you enjoy the sound of the bells. 
Remember, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride and thanks for watching.